turn it up, man. This thing's pretty scary. All right, what is up? Here's one of my little projects I'm trying to get done. I've been just leaving too many things in parallel, and then they don't get done. Nothing gets done. So what I'm working on now is basically one of these pair of Eco Blue Axial fans that I have. I have one other one that runs, kind of got running. So this is like my little test rig I made. So uh, I have like a little step-up power supply so I can run off 120, and here's a little potentiometer, and it runs the fan. This is the little plug-in to the control module. So for that other fan, what I'm doing is I got this out and I pulled the wiring out. I'm wiring on just a potentiometer for the speed control. It's gonna go through the back. And how this works is on these motors, the motors provide the DC power when you have the power in live. 10 volts on orange, white is your DC common, and then your gray is your speed signal in. Think of a two to 10. And it usually gets pretty close to 4 volts before the motor really gets running, so most of your control is between 4 and 10 volts. So this will just have a potentiometer and it'll control the speed. So we're going to reach back there and, and turn it up or down. So I'm going to shoehorn that in there. I also pulled out the high voltage and clipped it because I'm going to uh, take this longer green cable I got right there, like outdoor cable. And I'm going to run it through there and, and solder and uh, heat shrink this to make it uh, for my use. This is like one of those kits you get on Amazon or something. Bunch of little potentiometer volume control type things. Knobs, hardware. So just heat shrink that in there. Got that put in place and we'll suck it all up. And essentially it's going to look like this when I'm done. So let's go stick it back on the fan. Okay, back outside. This is the motor in question, so this should just plug right in now. Yeah. Tighten these up real quick. So what I need to do on this, and this might seem kind of hokey, and I kind of rushed it today just to get this project done, but I mean, it's just, it's just to spray water underneath our gazebo here. So I do need to make some sort of a hardware right here. I think I'm gonna put like a, sw a swivel joint, like a rod, and then some sort of hole or something through here with like a little set screw, wing nut set screw. And what I'm gonna do is make it so I can vary the pitch a little bit on this. So basically it's need to be right there. So right now let's see if we can get this just wedged so you can kind of just get an idea of what it's gonna do here. There's my power. So we have a bunch of tables, birthday parties, or Easter's coming up. I want to be able to just blow that, put some misters over here and just blow that air through here. The misters that go around this just go wherever the wind and gravity take them, but this thing's gonna freaking blow like a hurricane. I had like a party where I just stuck it right over here, hooked up a couple misters, and it just blasted this whole area. It's pretty cool. One hand, I wish it wasn't so gonna be so close to everybody sits you want some a little bit of distance but i need to keep this kind of out of direct range so right here i think it's going to work and i say that and then i might shoot mist <laughs> misters right through it i don't know i might put the misters on the outlet which will keep it from going through the fan I, and it, this this thing was like this i think this was left outside or something i don't know the word coal cleaner i don't know but yeah used but i'm tempted to kind of hook up the power real quick to my, I could just unplug that probably and stick this cable on there and see if it powers up. Okay, I just got the cable dropped temporary like to my disconnect and it's a sunny but cool day. It is later in the day. It's like probably getting closer to four o'clock. So with no load being hooked up, the voltage is very high at 366 volts DC, which is above nominal. Nominal is 30 volts on these panels at the full wattage and everything. And then when you're not pulling a load, it'll go up a little higher. So, um, so your uh, 230 volt input rectified into the capacitor in there, the DC link, DC bus, whatever you want to call it, um, is like 330 to 340 volts. So we're going to be above that. Depends on the threshold of those uh, surge suppressors. 
So we'll find out actually what's going to happen. So I'm going to plug it in. Might hear one of those explode, but the thing about solar power is there's not an infinite amount of current source behind them. So I have, uh, believe they're eight amps, right? So amp short circuit 8.85, right? So with in series, you're still at 8.85, so it's like 330 volts at 8.85. But then I have another bank paralleled, so it gives me 16 amps. So it's got 16 amps, about 5,000 watts behind it. So it probably could blow something, but it's not infinite. It will just spike to 17 amps, and that's all it can make. So what we'll do is put it in. I have heard, I plugged another ECM into this before, and it like popped. The surge suppressor's in it. <laughs> I heard them. Oh, the fan's already running. <laughs> I want to see what the voltage is. It's, oh, yeah, I see the sun's going down, so. Turn the fan off. You might not even have enough power to run that fan. Those fans are like a 1,000 watts, man, uh, depending on what model. Wow. Going up and now it's coming back up. I'm trying to see what's going up. Two. There's her click in there. And it is like later in the day. Let me pull this off again. It might not actually have enough voltage. It might be too late in the day. Oh no, she's going. Oh, it's surging though. It doesn't have enough power. Oh, well, maybe it does. I think she pissed off a little bit. That's as fast as you would ever probably run it with everybody out here because it, it gets really loud. Yeah. Cool. Oh, the, uh, the other thing I could do in case something's running in there is the uh, my inverter is still online. So what I should do is uh, when I put a, I'm gonna put a, probably a little switch through the bottom or something, a toggle switch as a disconnect for that fan. And then what I'll do is I'll put it off the line side because I could, I still got a disconnect means of unplug up there to work on this. I'll put it on the line side and then when we're running this out here, I could just pull this disconnect so that my solar charger will not be running off of this because that's sharing power in there depending on what's going on. So my batteries were charged up. Oh, and yeah, see where my inside stuff's taking an amp, over an amp of this. Over an amp at high, this 300 volts, so yeah. I bet you this fan would be running but, uh, a lot faster. If I, that's why it's probably pulsing up and down. <laughs> That was the, uh, the solar inverters doing its, uh, and people are used to the solar chargers, uh, what do they call it, MPT or whatever it is, they, uh, they pulse charge, like, whatever condition you are, like my son's way down, they kind of, like, get the most wattage they can, you know, by varying the pulse width, getting the voltage, and just, uh, it'll sag the voltage, but it'll kind of sag it down and to where you get the most wattage, you know amps with the voltage and everything that did to get the solar panels to give out the best they can get into your load basically it's kind of hard to explain it but so i'm tapping off the same power that that is so i believe if i went inside and turned off my my deal or just unhook it here that fan would probably rip in fact it'll take a second to, to try this one is 1285 watts 8.5 amps When the sun's higher, this thing would run full blast, no problem. This this array makes three to four thousand watts on a good day. This kind of meant to see how fast I get it to right now. Come on, baby. Ain't she rocking over there? doesn't even grill on the front of this. It's just kind of sketch. I mean, it's pretty high. 
Hopefully nobody sticks their hands in there. It definitely lasts. I mean, it's fast. I mean, these things are red. She turned it over. I gotta tighten that lug a little more. <laughs> pretty hard well it feels good it's like 73 degrees out here it's been getting up to like 78 uh, by the first of March here in the Phoenix area cool. so we're out here doing parties barbecues whatever out here I almost want to raise that brack that board up or put, or put a piece of pipe or something higher and raise this up just a little bit more up into there just to get it up about another three, four inches. But I mean, it's it's up there. Weld a lot of this with the uh, new TIG today. Still getting used to it. I mean, this is old bed frame, just scrap. And then down here, I came out okay, but when I was making these brackets, kind of kind of made it so you lift it up and hook the span into there. I kind of screwed up and had to cut it and re-weld it, so I kind of butchered that up a little bit, but it's not bad. It's good enough for government. Let's see what the amps are. Sorry. They're on the amps. Volts are probably sag down into the 200s, I'm sure. Oh no, 348. Turn that up just a pinch more. That means the panels are not even dropped down to nominal right now. What the heck? It's got to be getting there. I mean, I've got to balance a little bit. 333. Let's see what my amps are now. Give a second to stabilize. 1.6 DC amps. fine line I noticed like I said the solar panels are not an infinite source of power there's a limit depending on how much sun everything you got at best case this thing could deliver 16 17 amps at a uh, best temperature and best sunlight scenario right now it's low Sun so the angles the beam, the, the, the concentration of the the energy from the sun is spread out, you know, elliptically when as the sun's at an angle, so you get a fraction of what it is when it's overhead. So overhead's your best, and then after that you start diminishing. So, pretty cool. Uh, I'll get this wired up over the throughout the next week and get uh, some misters. I gotta add a valve maybe so I could shut off this row. I already have a valve over there and then tap off with another valve going to these ones. And this is a pump that kicks on and stuff. Uh, if it's still all hooked up, this switch here, hmm, I have turning on a solenoid. Yeah, see, it's on. Wow, well, I haven't even touched that for a while. Amazon solenoid. See if it even works. Is it on? Doesn't seem like my pump's kicking on, though. The uh, pump is still working, and uh, the wind's blowing this way. So right now, look at all this. <laughs> it's just, and then that's all just blowing into the yard over there. So you never know where you're gonna get this air. Plus, nobody probably wants you to sit right there. The raining down. We do have a lot of wind right now, but I'm gonna be able to select just everything on this thing and aim it where I want. It should be awesome. 
Something else I'm going to show you about the misters, just since they happen to work this time after sitting for many months. <laughs> Usually they're plugged up almost every time you want to go use them. You have to keep replacing the mister heads. But something I did on this to help alleviate that was put the drain with a ball valve that normally what you get in the kit are these things that kind of auto drain by just a little spring loaded check right here so the check closes when it's under pressure and you take the pressure off turn this pump off yeah. this turns that solenoid off click but what I do the pressure's dying out so I do this Blast the water pressure out that was built up and the water coming down will suck air backwards through your mister nozzles. At least that's the idea as that's draining like that is to pull air in. If I'm not mistaken, I think I was able to hear it before. That's too loud now, but you can hear a slight hiss sound, which should be the vacuum being drawn from the weight of the water. Which is, what is that like? 3.41 pounds per foot or something like that. No, it's 2.38, 2.38, I think that's what it is. 2.31. <laughs> 2.31 pounds, 2.38, something like that. PSI of pressure per foot is what water weighs. I don't know what that's gonna do for vacuum, but the weight of that water pulling down as it drains, pulls the air backwards through your nozzles, helps clear them out each time. That's what I do. Seems to work. 9.30 in the morning. Sounds about that angle right there. Remember, this is also still plugged into the battery charger. It actually runs full speed. <laughs> That's probably good enough airflow with the misters. That right there is a hurricane. Look at that thing moves back like a jet engine. Holy shit. Yeah. Just cruising. Turn it up, man. This thing's pretty scary. <laughs> 